Somewhere in California, a noted professor of physics is about to enter a technical seminar sponsored by an electronics company. The professor is well known for contributions in his scientific field, and it is not the first time he has visited the company. But his identification is checked by a special security guard assigned for the symposium. In New York City, a newspaper writer receives word about his column on a new nuclear submarine. Although he received a prior clearance from the Department of Defense, in its present format, the article is refused for release. In his post office box in a Chicago suburb, the stockholder of a large corporation finds a letter from the vice president in charge of public relations. The letter is in response to a question he has raised, but the question is not answered. Three human reactions in the course of a day. Understandable reactions to the effects of the all-out effort by the United States against unauthorized disclosure of classified information which can endanger our national security. In a democracy, television, radio, newspapers and magazines serve the public's need for information. Sources of the information are often the elected leaders themselves, who are aware the public must make the crucial decisions for the country. Disclosing all available information which does not compromise national security, they make use of the news media. But not to be forgotten is still another medium for the disclosure of information vastly important and, most of the time, vastly underestimated, word of mouth. There is then a need for the people of America to be informed. There exist the mechanisms to meet that need. In an ideal world, there would be no barrier between, no complication. But ours is no ideal world. And all over this world, hostile powers, in accordance with communist doctrine, seek our nation's fall by every means, overt and covert. That is why certain information which requires protection in the interest of national security is classified. Disclosure of classified information in violation of the requirements of security classification represents an unauthorized disclosure, what we must avoid if our national interest is not to be compromised. In our open society, what constitutes an unauthorized disclosure of classified information? Release of classified information to persons who have no need to know how do so many cases of unauthorized disclosure occur? Loose talk is one way about work inside the plant. In a large plant, someone from another division comes over for some information. Is his need to know established before granting access? Has the classified information been identified for him? If the answer is no, the result may well be an unauthorized disclosure. Failures in document control can lead to unauthorized disclosure. Carelessness, sloppiness in control procedures can result in lost documents. For example, cover sheets should not bear any identification markings. An important document may wind up in the hands of those unauthorized to read it. 
by the careless transposing of what should be file number S-103, and a great way to lose a document in the files so it will not be immediately available when needed. Another source of unauthorized disclosure, failure by a journalist to obtain security review clearances for public dissemination about a classified project. He had agreed in advance to submit it for review. But security review clearance procedures consume time, and the journalist, usually under competitive pressure, is racing against a deadline. Similarly, with technical papers prepared for presentation or for a meeting, there is almost always a rush toward the end in order to complete before the deadline. All too often, the author feels he cannot afford delay. And so, all too often, he decides on his own there is no need for security review. But he is in no position to make that decision, a decision that could be very costly to his country, to himself, and his family. Public officials, or frequently, prominent industrial executives, are often called upon to comment on speculations by reporters. It is a hard position to be placed in, especially if the speculation is involved with national security. The prominent official is careful about furnishing a lead to an always alert hostile intelligence apparatus that will analyze every statement he makes. That is why, in press conferences, public officials are not as free-spoken as they would undoubtedly like to be. And that is why those with important responsibilities in our nation's defense structure are concerned with unauthorized disclosures that may be innocent, but of advantage to a potential enemy. A key figure in the development of the nuclear-powered submarine, Admiral Hyman Rickover, once complained to a subcommittee of Congress that a toy manufacturer had produced a $2.98 model of the atomic submarine. If I were a Russian, Admiral Rickover said, I would be most grateful to the United States for its generosity in supplying such information for 298. The danger of unauthorized disclosures is the primary reason why security safeguards are maintained at technical meetings and conferences, why industrial corporations are careful about the information made available in advertisements, house publications, brochures, and stockholder reports to avoid unauthorized disclosure of classified information. Unquestionably, to a newspaper man concerned with a hot story and a stockholder eager for information, these restraints are inconvenient and troublesome, especially because in most cases there can be no public announcement of the specific reason for the restraint. It is understandable, then, why those whose activities and procedures are limited by security requirements should, at times, have an attitude of, why us? They may feel theirs as a unique position in the United States of America, a land where everybody is supposed to have the right to speak out freely. In other words, they feel there is something vaguely un-American about being required to keep a secret. But what they forget, even putting the question of national security aside, is that the ability to hold a confidence, to keep a secret, is the mark of many highly regarded professions. A minister, for example, receives the confidence of his parishioners. What they tell him is revealed to no one. A doctor does not examine a patient and broadcast his findings to all within earshot. It is strictly a matter between him and his patient, no one else. If you went to a bank to negotiate a loan, you would hesitate if you thought for a moment the bank official would not keep your transaction private, a matter between you and him.
a research chemist for a drug company, does not furnish progress reports to the company's competitors. Professional ethics, as well as common sense, motivate him to hold many secrets to himself. A meeting among successful businessmen, friends, all. But does each man reveal the private details of his enterprise to every Tom, Dick, and Harry? So it is that in many, many areas of American life, far removed from the world of defense production, silence is also golden. When it comes to certain restricted aspects of his job, the mark of the professional is he who knows when and how to keep his mouth shut. He does not talk about the classified aspects of his work. If somebody else requests information, he establishes a need to know before granting access. When satisfied, he then carefully identifies the classified information for the recipient. He obtains the appropriate security review clearances for public dissemination, for at all costs, he wants to avoid an unauthorized disclosure that could contribute to the undermining of our system by hostile foreign powers eager for the downfall of our way of life and those we hold dear. These foreign powers would cope with the problem differently. Rigid state control would be their answer. But in our society, self-discipline of each citizen is our answer. An answer a loyal citizen makes every time he has access to classified information when he carefully avoids an unauthorized disclosure that could bring harm upon us all.